Hey guys, it's Matt here, and today we're doing another episode of TG Tutorials. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how to record PS2 footage using your Elgato. So, first things first, let me show you exactly what you need. The first thing you'll need is a PlayStation 2. Now, the one that I'm using is modded, but you don't need to mod yours to record the game footage. And I have a slim model, but you don't need a slim model to record the game footage either. And I would also like to mention that you should definitely have AV cables original PlayStation 2 AV cables. Now you could get third-party ones online for real cheap, but though the quality on those does vary. But remember, we are using AV cables today, so no component and no HDMI conversions. Again, just for the purposes of this tutorial. And the next thing you'll need is an Elgato. And I know it's in the title of the video and the thumbnail. I get it. You know that you need one. But the reason why I bring it up, though, is because I want to talk about where you can get one. So this one isn't the newest model of an Elgato, but I do think that it still works just as fine. And also, depending on where you buy it, you could get it for under $150. So, But also remember, though, if you are getting it through third-party sellers, make sure that you do get all the wires and cords that are, cords that are necessary. And we will talk about those in just a moment. So moving on to the first of three cords we'll need, this is an AV cable converter. And also I would like to note for this tutorial that I'm using AV cables as a synonym for composite cables, the red, yellow, and white cables. So the Agato does not natively take these, it takes HDMI. But again, we're not using any converters, we're just trying to get the footage directly from the PS2. So in doing so, you're going to need to have this cable. Now if you bought an Elgato and it does not come with this cable, maybe third party or otherwise, Wise, you can go on Elgato's website and buy it directly from them. And the second cable you'll need is a micro USB cable. It should come with the Elgato if you buy it brand new, but again, if you don't, you do need to get one on either eBay or any other third party seller. They usually are very cheap, but also be careful of where you're buying one from. Uh, you want it to be cheap in price, of course, but not cheap in quality. Either way, though, uh, we'll talk about why you need the micro USB cable a little bit later, but either way, you're going to need one and you're also going to need one HDMI cable. We don't need two pairs, thankfully, because remember we're using AV cables in this situation, but you do need an HDMI cable as well. We'll talk about why in just a moment. And now that you know what you need, let me show you how to get this thing done. All right, first things first, you are going to need to download a program to work with your Elgato. Thankfully, it is free and available through Elgato's website. For the purposes of this tutorial, we are using the Windows version. So when looking at the Elgato, we can see that we plug in the adapter into the AV import and then turning the Elgato around, we actually plug in the micro USB cable into that side as you might have seen earlier, but we are plugging the other side, the USB port, into a computer. And the reason why we're doing that, I don't know why I pronounce computer that way, but the reason why we're doing that isn't to power on the system, but so that it is recognized by your computer. And as you can see right next to it, the HDMI out is why we needed an HDMI cable. Plug that into the Elgato and then plug the other side into a television or monitor of your choosing. And now that you've done all that and installed the program, let's double click this icon right here and let's open it up. And if you've set everything up correctly, your screen should look just like this. Now, if for some reason over here where there's the video, if for some reason it is either black or blue or it says that it's trying to connect to a signal or something like that, make sure everything's been plugged in correctly and also make sure that you go over here to this cog, you click on that, and then once this window pops up, you see that you have the video input on composite. Remember, even though the HDMI is going out into your monitor, you need to make sure to have this set to composite. Also, having the input device set to other. When you click on the input device, you can see there's a bunch of different filters that they already have set up, assuming you're using a PlayStation 3, 4, Xbox 360, etc., etc. But obviously, we're using something much older than that, so you have to have it set on other. And at this point, let's make sure your settings are set up correctly. Now, correctly really varies from computer to computer, laptop to laptop, but for me, because I'm actually recording this for this tutorial, I'm not using the Elgato. I'm using open broadcast software so because of that I actually have to have the quality all the way down and also this laptop is terrible so you might have the quality down to good you might be able to put it to best really you're going to have to work that out yourself depending on what system you have so 
Uh, looking at cropping, I usually have it at none. If I want to crop anything, I'd rather just do it myself through a video editing software of choice. And also looking at convert standard definition 640 and stretch standard definition input. Again, those are things that I could really just do myself. So I don't really feel the need to do them with the program itself. Now going over to picture, you can actually see that there's brightness, contrast, saturation, and hue. I'm not touching any of these. And the reason why is because when you move them and you can do that yourself, if I do it here, it'll probably mess up the recording. But when you notice, uh, when you do it, you're gonna notice that the it actually ends up being an overlay rather than an underlay. I believe that's the right term. Either way, it is basically a front light, not a backlight. So you might as well just keep all of that at default. And when you're using a video editing software, just changing all of this in that software, you're going to have a lot, um, a lot more uh, flexibility. And also you can easily turn it off. You can't turn it off after making a recording. So again, I would suggest testing that out yourself. But personally, I've never Ever liked it so looking at audio of course you can use audio gain to change how loud you sound to uh, anyone who's listening to the recording or the live stream we're talking about recordings for the purposes of this tutorial but you can go live with the Elgato as well profiles is unneeded to me I'm the only one using this so I don't really see a need to go on profiles but for advanced this one is very important especially if after clicking OK there still is a problem with flickering there might be an issue Issue with the compatibility of your TV ie your monitor there hasn't really been for me but if there is for you definitely uh, scroll that bar around if you need to so at this point everything should look just fine over here if it's not please comment down below I'll try to help you as best as I can but at this point we're going along with the assumption that you have everything playing right over here now as you can see this is not a plug our twitch is actually logged in here we're just trying to uh, do some live streams from this laptop again remember it sucks but either way though you can log in on twitch directly through also I believe on YouTube gaming as well directly through the Elgato you can see game audio right here. I have it on, but really it just depends on what you want to do. I would rather have it on and then mute it. If you're making a recording, I would rather mute it later so that you have access to the audio if you need to. But either way though, you can easily mute that and bring that game audio down to zero. Now looking at live commentary, that will only matter if we were going live and we're not, so we're going to move on. Down here you see tags. Now when it comes to recording footage, that ends up being the actual name of the file itself. I just leave it as my great capture, not based on hubris, mostly due to the fact that I'd rather just edit it uh, afterwards because when dealing with footage, depending on the type of footage you're dealing with, let's say you're doing a comparison HD remaster versus the original. Yes, you're going to notice a difference in quality most likely, but if it's through something like the you know SNES Classic and you're comparing an HD upscaler or something like that, you might end up sit, sitting back and going, wait, which one is the, the right footage? I don't know. So I would suggest leaving it at my great capture and then just re renaming it afterwards rather than naming it one thing and then having it all you know, the other files being named that same thing. So again, I just leave it at my great capture and then fix it later. But obviously, the choice is yours. So going over to this big shiny red button, it says record self explanatory. Uh, going over here to this button right here, it's a screenshot, you can take a screenshot of any footage that's going on in the program itself. I don't really use it. I would rather just use VLC media player or any media player. Heck, even video editing software has the ability to take screenshots as well. So no real need to use this right here. Um, but looking at the disable preview, that might actually work for you. Now, remember, you're not going to need the preview technically anyway. So you need it to obviously see if things are, are, are going well. But you're not using the preview as your reference point. You're actually using your monitor or TV, whatever it is, because of the fact that it is delayed on the Elgato. Any video uh, capture software is going to delay the footage. So really, if for some reason things are extremely slow on your, on your laptop, you could click disable preview and that should end up speeding things up. But again, you also run the risk of if there is some issue somewhere. 
uh, that you might that on some unforeseen issue, you don't know that the stream is having issues or the recording is having issues. Looking at this shiny green button, that's stream right over there. And of course, the shiny blue button, commentary. So commentary is relevant because of course you can record the commentary directly through the Elgato, either if you're going live or even if you're just recording it for a Let's Play or something like that. Um, I would suggest not doing that, perhaps using an external program as well. Again, just a situation where if you need to move the audio or something like that, the audio or if there's an issue with uh, game audio, maybe it was too loud, maybe it was too low, you don't have it embedded into the video itself. So again, just future proofing your videos, giving yourself a little bit more flexibility. But again, that's all up to you. So now we're on the edit side and the reason why is because you can actually edit the videos directly with this program. Now I've never done that so I sadly can't give any tips or anything like that regarding editing with the Elgato. I would just rather not but if you wanted to the option is open. You can even upload them to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter directly from this program or just make it and code it into an mp4 file. So that is pretty cool. Again I don't use it personally but it's still pretty cool that Elgato does offer that natively and you can see here all of the videos that I recently recorded this is smash because I was actually doing another video for TG tutorials on Elgato's and recording n64 footage so you can see that right there and a few other uh, files up there for future episodes of weird pickups which is actually on our TG productions channel so you can actually use this interestingly enough little uh, side note for VHS uh, tapes as well for VCRs so this isn't just limited to video games but but of course, it's being marketed as you know, something to use for video game recordings. Either way, guys, that about wraps up this portion of the video. So let's jump back to me in front of a shelf. And as you can see, it's really not that bad. Now, if you are having any troubles, though, please comment down below. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. But sometimes there are just some weird compatibility issues with the Elgato. I'm currently having some on my PC, and that should be running this thing flawlessly. Running any, uh, any kind of game through the Elgato flawlessly, but yet somehow there's some weird flicker effect. So that can happen from time to time. Hopefully it's not happening to you, but if it is, Comment down below, we'll try to talk about this together. So, either way, love you all, take care, and before you go, if you like the video, please remember to like and subscribe, and if you want to leave any kind of, um, any comments on potential future episodes of TG Tutorials, any suggestions, any questions of your own, please comment down below, we'll, we'll have a discussion. So, love you all, take care, tune in next time, see ya.